Thank you for joining us today. Have you ever felt like you were off track and you didn't know where you were going? Well, today I hope to talk to you about getting back on track by abiding in the vine, by abiding in Jesus. But before we do that, the worship team is going to lead us in the worship. So enter in before the Lord, prepare your heart to receive what God has for you today. God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Shout out to praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out to praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out to praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross, then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Because we were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're run and free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the loves of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're run and free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace.
Thank you, worship team. Today, we're going to be talking about abiding in Him. You know, years ago in Texas, in their history, towns grew because of the oil business. And there were, they were called boom towns. And they started quickly because oil strikes in, in uninhabited areas in Texas. And people would flock to them hoping to make it big. One boom town outside of Beaumont, Texas had four main roads which the oil men named them this. That way, this way, anyway, 
and his way. The oil dried up and thousands of people flooded out of town. Many people took that way. Others took this way. Some chose anyway. And a small group of people chose his way. In our world today, many are going this way. And that way in any way. But few are going his way. The only way that we will go his way is if we're intentionally seeking to be connected with him, Jesus. And today, as we talk about that, I believe it will stir your heart. If you have your Bible with you, you can turn to John 15. And John 15 reveals to us what it is to be connected with Jesus and the importance of being connected with him. Let's look at John 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branches cannot bear fruit of itself... Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. In verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. We know Jesus is the, is the vine, the source of life and power, because we have relationship with him. We are the branches and we are connected to the true vine. All right, God the Father is the vine dresser. And the one who prunes us. And he prunes the dead stuff off. And many times he prunes the new growth so that the branches concentrate. And the areas of the grapes, they give uh, and bear a better fruit and a bigger fruit. You know, we see that the vine in the Old Testament was God being disconnected from the vine when Israel was disobedient to God. Jesus in the New Testament says that he himself is the vine and the believers are connected to him to be able to do the things that he commands us to do to be followers of Christ. You know, branches that do not bear fruit, he takes away. Or in essence, we go away. There are many times that we try to go our own way and we are separated from Christ and what he wants to do. Pruning, on the other hand, allows God to cut the things out of our life that are to make us bear better fruit. And sometimes we, don't, we, we miss that point of what Jesus is doing and how he's changing our life because we don't see that he's even pruning the good branch so that it produces better fruit. And sometimes we don't like to be pruned on. But... God says he needs to prune us. Remain in me is a warning that apart from me, the vine will not bear fruit. If you're cut off and laid on the ground, you're not going to pr- produce fruit. In fact, apart from the vine, you spiritually die. A branch is a, fr- that is taken away from the vine is lifeless. And they're gather up and burn. His repetitious wording here urges us about being on the vine where we receive life. And apart from it, we can do nothing. And so if things aren't going right in your life, sometimes we need to think about, am I connected to the vine the way I should be? Because apart from it, we die. In John 15, 1, it says, I am the vine. It is the last of the seven I am's declarations recorded in the Gospel of John. 
these I am proclamations point to a unique divinity and our divine identity and a purpose. Jesus said, I am the true vine. To the closest people gathered around him, he was saying that, I am the vine to the disciples. And Jesus was preparing his disciples for the pending crucifixion, that the things that were about to happen, his, also his resurrection, and subsequently his departure for heaven. He was preparing his disciples. These are the things that are going to happen. And so many times we don't see what God is doing because we don't recognize it, just like the disciples didn't recognize it. Jesus was preparing them that he was leaving. But he said that he would continue to nourish and sustain them just as the roots and the trunk of the 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 grapevine produced energy that nourished the branches and helped develop their fruit. That's what the life, the life, he was said, I'm going to continue to bring life to you. Jesus wants us to know that even though we cannot see him at times. We don't see him, and, but we're closely connected to him as the branches of the vine. We are connected to him. God is connecting you to him. You know, our desire to know him and love him and to have energy to serve him, to do what he wants us to do, keeps us flowing the way he wants to. It keeps life flowing through our veins as we follow him and we do the things that are necessary. That gets us back on track when we're doing the things we know we should do. Jesus went on to remove any of the misunderstandings. If you look at John 15, 4, you can see it. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. There is life here, and this is the only place you're going to find life. He said that no branch can live, let alone produce fruit if it's by itself. You know, there's something about the saints getting together because we encourage and we strengthen and we bring life to each other. That's why it's important to be involved in church, to be connected with people. You got to be connected. So many times we, we want to be the Lone Ranger, but God says we need to be connected. And so I encourage you, if you're not involved in church, be involved in church somewhere. You need fellowship. You need those things. He goes on. Cut off from the trunk, a branch is dead. Just as the vine branches rely on being connected to the trunk to receive its energy, to bear fruit, Jesus is our connection. We need to be connected. You know, the disciples depended on being connected to him for their spiritual life and their ability to serve him effectively. They were hanging out with Jesus. And all of a sudden, Jesus says, I'm going to be gone. Things are going to change. But he did say this. The fruit we produce is from the Holy Spirit. That joy, that love, that patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. All those things come from the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said, he was preparing his disciples, if I don't leave, this doesn't come. And we can live and serve him effectively only if we're connected to him in faith and love and relationship. That's, that's the thing. But then Jesus goes on to say something else. Jesus says even more strongly, without me, you can do nothing. Think about that. This illustration is reality. No believer can achieve anything in the spiritual value independently from Christ Jesus. We can't. He also reminds us that there are some of us who bear no fruit. Have you ever had a tree that bared no fruit? 
I have, it produced no fruit. It and ended up killing it because it wasn't doing anything. It wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. And I planted something that would produce fruit. And that's, that's the way we are. We are supposed to, to bear fruit. And true branches aren't fruitless. They produce fruit. All true branches bear fruit. We need to understand that. Just as we know the healthy and the living tree, it, it produces good fruit. An apple tree produces apples. A cherry tree produces cherries. So we recognize fruitless branches, that they're not connected. We cut them off and we prune them. This is why Jesus, it says, by their fruit, you will know them. Those who do not produce good fruit are cut away and burned. Yeah, that's a little harsh, ain't it? No. That's, that's the true nature of what's going on here. See, eventually fruitless branches are identified and they're cut off from the vine because they're sucking life and not producing. And see, God wants us to produce fruit. He wants us to, to grow and, and be fruitful. I mean, that's what he told us from the beginning. Be fruitful and multiply. He wants us to do good. See, no one can serve God effectively until he has a relationship with Jesus Christ by faith. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you, you can't serve God. I mean, you can be a good person, but it's, it, you can't serve God. There has to be that relationship. Jesus is our only connection with God, who gave us life and produces fruitful life of righteousness and service. You know, Christ is the life-giving vine. We need to be connected to him. We are the branches that God the Father has grafted into him. I'm amazed at how God changes my life and grafts me into his family. And that's what we are. We are grafted into him. Christ is the life-giving vine. And we need to understand that. If we're connected to him, we will bear fruit. If not, we are dead because our strength and our faith can't live without him. We have to be connected to him. So you feel like you're going the wrong way? Then things need to change. You need to open up to him and what God wants to do so that you can be where he, you need to be at. See, our relationship with Jesus Christ is unlike anything else. When it's good, it's nothing, li nothing else like it. And when it's bad, we struggle to feel connected. If you abide in me, you have life. Apart from me, you will die. That's really what it's saying. If you allow me to prune and correct you, you'll bear much fruit. If you do not, you cannot do anything apart from me. See, being connected with Jesus, you'll bear much fruit. Because God, when you allow him to work on some things in your life, that's when things change. They believe that Jesus said these words to his disciples in the upper room even before Judas betrayed him. Jesus was warning them that to be disconnected from him, the future would be disastrous for their relationship with him. Abide in me. So what does it mean to abide in me? What does that look like in your life? Would people know that you love Jesus? Or would they, would they, would they scratch your... I don't, I don't know. I can't tell. Would they... Would they that, 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 sure ain't, that sure ain't nobody that loves Jesus. What does it look like in your life? You know... How easy it is for a father 
to give to his kids when they're doing the right things, when they're doing the things they're supposed to be doing. Think about that. How easy is it for the Father to give things to you if you're following him the best way you know how? Does that mean that you never fail? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's easier for the Father to do things when they know you're trying, when you're doing the right things. Let's look. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. If we believe that, if we believe that, we should have no limitations when we're following God. God can, can make a way when it seems to be no way. When it seems like we get off track, God can bring us back to where we need to be. In John 14, 12, it says this, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. The works that Jesus does, we will do also. But it doesn't stop there. And greater works than these will he do. And Jesus did some amazing things. If you cannot go through the word and... and See the things, I mean, that he did. He says we will do greater things because I go to the Father and I send the Holy Spirit. You know, he says we're going to do greater works. He tells us that our strength and our faithfulness depends on our relationship with him. Mm. What's your prayer life like? And you think, well, I, I get down by the bed and pray every night. I'm not, that's, are you talking to God often? Just like I'm talking to you. Are you talking to God often? Talk to him. Tell him, you know, these are the things that are going on in my life. Lord, I need your help. I need you to help me. Give me direction. Help me. Pray for other people. That's what we're supposed to be doing, reaching out to other people. I think each of us has to be honest and and take a look at our life and see if what we're going through, wanting God to intervene and to attribute the fact that maybe we haven't been in communication with him enough and talk to him. And could that be hindering our fruitfulness? Is God wanting to prune some things out of your life? Is he wanting to take care of some things? Maybe that's why the power of God's not working in you. You need to be abiding in him. You need to be connected. Let me tell you this. Prayer works. Talking to God works. It'll change your life if you spend time with him. Talk. You know, this day and age, it doesn't matter when you're in your car. People think you're talking on the phone because of Bluetooth. You can talk to God wherever you're at. You can talk to him in the shower. You can talk to him, and you can tell him what's going on. Lord, I need your help. I need this. Help me. Lord, I'm struggling with this. Help me to walk where you need me to be at. You know, praying is a privilege when you think that the God of the universe would listen and hear you and desire to work in your life and through you. To see the power of God being manifest in us. And there are times where God does things in us. It's like, where in the world did that come from? Because that, that isn't me. But I can tell you this. As you're connected with God, things will start getting back on track. If you have been away from him, it's time to get back connected with him. God, God sees your failures and he leaves them there. He says, come to me, bring them to me, and I'll take care of them. You know, we all fail. We all miss the mark. And there are times where we just need to say, God, turn things around in my life. You know, only the Holy Spirit can stir us and allow us to take hold of the things that God wants to do in our lives. 
We just need to say, Lord, here I am. Lord, let your Holy Spirit just work in me. Let it flow over me. Let me do the things I need to do. And as you do that, things will change. He wants to abide in you. Allow him to prune the unfruitfulness in your life. You know, it may be tough sometimes. But as God takes care of those things, all of a sudden you'll see the fruit and God will start working in your life and you'll bear much fruit. That's what he says. Let me take care of these things so you can bear much fruit. God wants to do to work in your life. Allow him so that you can abide in him. Let me pray for you today. Father, we thank you. We can come to you and you touch our life in such a way that it transforms us. And Lord, I just ask that you would minister to people even if they feel like they've got off track, Lord, that you would let them abide in you. As they start talking to you, as they start reading your word, turn things around. And Lord, we just believe for you to turn things around in people's lives. Lord, let your grace be poured out on people that they would feel your presence and your strength. Lord, do great things in people as they open up to you and they say, Lord, Anything that needs to be pruned, take care of it. And Lord, we believe for great fruit to come about. Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm so glad you joined with us today. If you'd like to be involved somewhere and you're not, we would love to have you come and be involved with us here at 2360 Hardy Road in Benton, Virginia. May God bless you and keep you. If you want to give, you can go to our website. I encourage you to do that. There are many ways to do that. So take time to do that. Be a part. And I encourage you, if you're not in church, be in church somewhere. Don't keep what God does to yourself. Share it with somebody.